We're going to talk today about topics in pre-primary, how topics relate to projects, and we're going to look at a series of practical ideas that I've seen in classrooms around Spain. So let's take a look. What are some typical topics that uh, we do in pre-primary or that the kids bring up in the pre-primary classes? So some of you are saying things like toys, or family, what are some other things? Good, transportation. Yeah, they love animals, you're right. Food, pets, you know, so ties in with the animals. Let's take a look at some of the things I had down. So this idea here, I feel, is, is E. That, you know, like many of us have said, they like talking about my family, my friends. So, you know, right off the bat, anything that sort of has to do with them is something that they usually quite like. And then sort of in the red circle on the outside there, Things are just a little bit further away from home for them. So things like their school, their neighborhood, their town. And then on the outer circle, as you can see, we've got all of these things that you also brought up, like transport and habits and cartoon characters and the world around them. Sort of my world would probably include this idea of the solar system and the moon and the sun. So let's take a look at some of the ways it's defined. So if we look at the Wikipedia definition, it says, in contemporary business and science, a project is an individual or collaborative enterprise possibly involving research and design that's carefully planned, usually by a project team, to achieve a particular aim. So there's a definition. But if we had to apply that to pre-primary, out of that text, which ones apply to pre-primary? For example, quite a few of you said collaborative. So it's true, in pre-primary, projects can be collaborative or can be individual. For example, a project all about me would be the child participating more about their own stuff than doing perhaps a collaborative job. So let's take a look now at some things possibly to keep in mind for preschool projects. Let's see if you agree or disagree. In my opinion, I think that preschool projects need to be close to students centers of interest. So this is what we talked about with those concentric circles. So it doesn't mean it has to be close to them, you know, my family. No, they can talk about the solar system, but we wouldn't want to be, for example, talking about economics, perhaps. So, you know, things that are close to the children and that the children are interested in. Uh, they need to be guided, as we said, structured, guided, with flexibility, obviously. If you're guiding and monitoring students, it doesn't mean you're ordering them what to do. Uh, they should be open-ended so that they allow for thinking skills to be used. We've said here collaborative, but as we've just previously discussed, depending on the topic, they could also be individual. Some of you talked about it integrating different subjects. It can also integrate different skills. You know, they're developing different skills, cognitive skills, literacy skills, social skills through the project. Designed to develop critical thinking, be interactive, meaningful and if possible i think it's nice that they share display you know have an opportunity to show their work to someone we're going to look at a series of different projects that i saw during classroom observations in safa schools and claret in seville so here this was the first one i wanted to talk to you about an all about me project and what they did was my name is and as you can see on the left hand side we've got the birthday and the favorite animal and the favorite color. So again, this idea that the child is building from his or her own personal experience. So obviously this would be a more individual project with individual views and opinions, but if it's done in such a lovely way, the kids could then have their all about me wall or all about me display and could possibly compare and find similarities between their, their families. The other one that they did was I saw another classroom where the kids were doing the life cycle of a bird. And in this case, it was fantastic because she had the whole class dressed up as birds. They all had their bird masks that they'd made themselves on a previous day. Then she went through the story of the life cycle of the bird and how they come from the eggs and how they grow up and that, 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 that. She put the cards around the room and then the whole flock of birds went through the life cycle, dramatizing it at each station. So again, a nice way to work on science associated with a lesson in the book and sort of extending your topic into a project. It's true, no, it's true. Pupils do speak Spanish when they're coloring. Ways we can get around that, you can put some music on in the background. If you're singing with them and they're learning the songs, they will eventually start um, 
picking up on more English, you really can't be expecting them to sort of sit and share all the time in English. So I mean, we have to encourage them, we have to provide them with lots of sort of auditory support, but we also have to be realistic, I think. Fantastic, good, okay, well, I hope you can try them. We are out of time, so uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send them to us. Uh, we hope to see you another day at another webinar. On my webpage, you can find a link to my professional Facebook page and my email if you need anything specific. Good job, guys. We did it.